Good morning. Good morning. God has given us another opportunity to uh, come to this place and to serve him in spirit and in truth. I'm always mindful and I remember the scripture um, in, in, in Acts 17. The Bible says when Paul was preaching in his sermon on Mars Hill, he came across a, uh, an inscription um, to the unknown God and he begins to preach that sermon and he says, yeah, he's unknown to you. Let me, let me tell you about him. And he goes on to say it's in him, God, that we live, that we move, and that we have our very being. Brothers and sisters, that is true, just like it was written then, as much as it is today, now. A lot of people lay down last night with the expectation to get up this morning, and they weren't as blessed as you and I were blessed. Good morning, Trent. I'm glad to see you. And I hope we never, ever take for granted the blessing that we have right now of corporately coming together, gathering around the table, um, participating in the, in the communion, singing songs of, of praise to God, encouragement to each other. Yeah, you look at your life and you're not what you, what you want to be. You know, I look at me and, and I'm not this and I want to do this. But you know what? I have to flip the script. I'm not what I want to be, but thank God I'm not what I used to be. And we really need to say thank you, God for all of your goodness, for all your grace, and for your mercy. Welcome visitors who are among us. We are glad that you are here. On the sick list, um, we're continuing to pray for the people that we've always been praying for, um, the Crawford family for health concerns, also for the Reed family in Springtown, Texas. There was a, a uh, automobile accident where there was a, a loss of life and, and they sent word back knowing that, that you guys, we are a praying church. They sent word back asking us to please pray for them. There was some loss of life in this auto accident. So our prayer now is for this family um, to, to not only adjust to it, but adjust to this new normal. And then my personal prayer has been that they find meaning and purpose as they move forward um, without, without their loved ones. So continue to pray for the Reed family um, as they adjust to things that are going on. Next Sunday is uh, Father's Day, June 16th. We want to uh, encourage everybody to uh, do something special for, uh, for, for Dad and to uh, just, just let's honor our fathers, whether they're still with us in the flesh or whether now they are, uh, they are at home with the Lord. We need to always be thankful for the role that fathers play in the home and for everything that fathers do. We recently had an opportunity to go to Colorado City um, in their youth and family series for the summer. Um, the young man from Ninth and Main uh, Church in San Angelo preached an outstanding lesson, and I'm so glad um, Ernest went with me, and then Brandon also uh, went with us. Um, there was food, there was fun, there was fellowship. Ernest, I think they're still waiting on you to pay for all that food that you ate. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I said I was kidding. I said I'm kidding. I said I'm kidding. Stop it. Stop. Stop it. I'm kidding. He's going to run me off. But no, it, it, what, what I like about those fellowships is we get a chance, brothers and sisters, to fellowship with other congregations and encourage each other to keep on keeping on. You know what I mean? To keep preaching and teaching the word of God. Because if we don't encourage each other as the body of Christ, as believers, then, then the world certainly is not going to encourage us. So thank you to those who prayed for us. Thank you to those who went. The next one I think is going to be on June 20th. And that's going to be in San Angelo at the Ninth and Main Congregation. They'll be talking about what is biblical silence. And then after that, on July the 11th, which I plan to go to that one. I don't think I can make the June 20th one. But it'll be in Lawn after that. And I'll give us a reminder about that. And that'll be three kinds of biblical authority. So please make the next one on June 20th if you can. And then Lawn is uh, July the 11th. Remember also the last Saturday we are uh, in June. We're celebrating Tangina's retirement reception. School's out forever. 
the, the poster says. And so that'll be in Abilene. Um, we're having it at the gallery on uh, Walnut Street, 1117 Walnut. That is the studios and gallery. It'll be a come and go on that Saturday from 2 to 4 p.m. And then also finally, and I'll get into the lesson, Fifth Sunday Singing, we are hosting that at the end of the uh, month, the last Sunday in this month. That'll be June 30th at 5 o'clock p.m. And uh, so we're inviting uh, congregations to come and participate in the congregational singing. Song leaders, come, come ready to sing and uh, put your name on the list. And this is just another opportunity to have fellowship and some food and to sing songs of praise to God. And so we, we want you to mark your calendars for that. This month I'm, fi I'm working on a series called Getting Past our past. That's based on 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 14. And you don't need to talk to people very long before the subject of their past or your past is going to come up. And especially those of us that are believers, those of us that are Christians, a lot of times things have happened in our past we're not proud of, um, we're, we're, we're quite ashamed of, but we don't need to let that continue to, let, to, to shackle us to be um, effective for God. We all have a past. And I say it all the time. Saints have a past, but sinners got a future. And we really need to not let our past um, hold us back from doing what God wants us to do. And so this month, I'm very clear. I'm very deliberate. I'm very intentional. I want to give you some things to help you unpack the past so that we can keep our past from living in the present. Today, we're going to look at verse 16 and verse 17 uh, of that text, and we're going to notice that we need to go through. If I'm going to disarm my past, then I need to go through what I'm going to call a realignment mindset. I don't need to let the, the power of the past hold me from enjoying the pleasures of the present so that I can do what God is calling me to do. Pray with me. Dear Father in heaven, we're so thankful, Lord, for your grace and for your mercy. Thank you for the power of the gospel that continually cleanses us, that, Lord, we, 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 we learn things about your will through your word, and, and we live lives, we try to live lives on a daily basis worthy of the calling of the gospel. Help us to always be the people of purpose that you've called us to be. Let our light so shine, Lord, that others may see your good works and glorify God magnified through our lives. Forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings. We ask a special blessing for the family who's gone through some loss of life, auto accidents in Springtown. Lord, that's always a tough time. Help them to derive and ascribe meaning and understanding, and ultimately, Lord, help it to this circumstance for them to draw closer to you. Help us to be salt, help us to be light, that people can see your good works, and you get all the glory, and all the honor, and all the praise. We thank you in Jesus' name, amen. I had a car when I was younger, and uh, I would get in that car, and every time I drove straight down the road, if I took my hands off that steering wheel, that car would always go to the left. And it doesn't really matter how fast or how slow I was going, if I let my hands off that wheel, that car, despite all that's good and holy, <laughs> wanted to always go to the left. I just thought that was normal. A buddy of mine let me drive his car once, and I noticed his car didn't do that. Matter of fact, I tried it a couple of times, not for very long, so y'all get ex don't get excited. I took my hand off the wheel for just a few seconds, and it stayed straight. And I went back to him, and I said, Brother so-and-so, something wrong with your car. He said, what do you, what, did you have access? No, something wrong with your car. It don't do like mine. He said, well, wh what does yours do? I said, I let my hand go for a few minutes, and that thing just goes to the left. He said, let me see it. He was a mechanically 
inclined uh, person. And so uh, Brother Gerald got in my car, and he started driving it, and he let go for a minute. He started going to the left. He said, Fambo, uh, you need a front-end alignment. I said, a what? <laughs> he said, you need a front-end alignment. I said, well, I was planning to get some new tires. Uh, would that help? He said, that probably wouldn't hurt, but you need a front-end alignment. He took that thing, and he knew a guy who knew a guy back then, and fixed it, and I still ended up needing some new tires. But you know, I learned back then, cars have to be adjusted. And that front end is not supposed to, when you let it go like that for a few seconds, it's supposed to stay pretty true. It's not supposed to go off like this right here. And I'm telling you, every time I drove that car, I just thought it was normal for that thing to pull all the way to the left. And, and it wasn't just about the tires. And I promise you, I mean, some days I looked like this when I was trying to keep that thing straight and trying to get, because I just thought that was normal. I was fighting that wheel and biting that wheel and, and probably saying a few things I shouldn't have. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. But I, I just thought that was normal. It wasn't until Brother Gerald came and he knew more about cars than I did. And he said, Brother Amble, you need to have your front end aligned. I never forgot that. And I want to take off on that analogy this morning for a few minutes when we go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Because if you're going to uh, not let your past live in the present, some of us need a, 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 an alignment mindset. We need to realign our mindset. Our past has been living in the present and it's been taking over you and it's been harboring you and holding you back so long. You think that's normal? No. Second Corinthians 5, I want to show you spiritually, some of us need a realignment mindset. Listen to Paul. Now, how Paul tells us how things used to be, but now let's look how things should be and how they ought to be. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 14, he says, Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all, therefore all died. Verse 15, he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and uh, was raised again. Look at 16. From now on, there's that realignment. See, it, it used to, the car used to drive this way, <laughs> but, but now something has happened. It's been fixed. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Did you hear it? Did you see it? You see the adjustment, the shift? Christ has now come, and he's died on the cross. His blood now has cleansed us. So from this point forward, the car shouldn't drive. <laughs> the car should drive like it used to drive. Now things ought to be straight. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, and the new is here. In other words, we got to look at from now on is the starting point. Irregardless of what happened in the past, yes, you may have been hurt. Yes, things have been happened. Yes, you were a different person. But from now on, from this point forward, your Christianity and that car ought to drive differently. Though we once regarded Christ this way, from this point forward, the past is that way. And the future is this way. And you want to know how to, to not let your past continue to live in the present, even though we are human? There are ways scripturally that I don't need to let my past live in the present. How do I do that? We got to realize you got to go out with the old and in with the new. And it's what I'm calling having a realignment mindset. In other words, Christ has already come into my life. I have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes, there are some things that have happened in my past. Thank you for reminding me of that. But like I told you last week, we got to flip the script. Satan, you don't have power on me in that regard anymore. Now 
Christ and I are moving forward. I'm going to show you exactly how we get this realignment mindset. Even though we are human too often, like I said, we allow the pain of our past to drunken our senses to our current blessings. The fact is you woke up this morning. The fact is you have a house to live in. You got a place to live. The fact is you got food to eat in your refrigerator. We need to flip the script. It may have been bad in the past, but God has blessed us now. See, we don't need to let our past control us. We don't need to let our past rob us, and we don't let our past keep us tied down to that painful situation. Our goal this month, again, is how to keep the past from living in the present. It begins with obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ and becoming a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old has been washed away. Behold, Paul said, all things become new. But let me show you the step to do that. How do I, how do I get in my life every day when the pain of the past and things of the past keep reminding me and try to shackle me and try to pull me down. Brother Fample, how do I use that new knowledge to help me live new every day when everything around me is wanting me to pull me back to the past? Let me show you how to do that in Acts 10. Peter actually had a vision and, and, and he saw in this, in this vision, this, this sheet coming down. And, 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 and Peter, again, saw all these unclean and, and hooved animals on this sheet. And, and, and God told him, said, now rise, Peter, kill and eat. And, and Peter has the natural Jewish response, not so, Lord. Everything that I've ever done, I've never touched anything that's unclean. Well, that's what Peter thought. Now, let me show you what God thinks. Peter's retelling the story, Acts 10, further down in verse 23. The next day, Peter stood out with them, and some of the believers from Joppa went along with him. And the following day, he arrived in Caesarea. Cornelius was with them, and he was expecting them, and he had called them together with his relatives and close friends. So they're now at Cornelius' house, this, this centurion who has really called for some Bible study. He wants, he wants to know more perfectly what the law of God is really all about. And so he's calling, and he needs Peter. God has already set this thing up where Peter is going to be teaching them. And so verse 25 Peter is now entering Cornelius' house. And Cornelius met him, and he, and he fell down at his feet at the entrance. And Peter, Peter made him get up. Peter says, stand up. He said, I'm only a man myself. And while talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. And he, he said to them, now you're well aware that it's against the law for Jews to associate or even visit with Gentiles. But God, stop right there. You want to know how to keep your past from living in the present? You want to know how, how, how God really can, can use the experience that you went through not to shackle you down but to free you? Two words start the process. But God. Remember I told you last week, we need to, and I gave you some boxes to, to pack up. I'm going to give you one again today. Last week in the box, you remember I told you, flip the script. Look, how, look at how you're seeing this thing and flip it. Instead of looking at it in a negative context, flip that and give God all his props and God all of his due. Yes, it was bad, but God brought you through it. See, we, we tend to always, we tend to always want to see how bad it is. And I'm saying, if you really want to disarm the past, flip the script. Yes, it was bad, but give glory to God. He brought me through it. Look at what Peter said. Peter said, but God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. Peter had to flip the script. He had to flip the script and go against the cultural grain and really start looking at what God wants me to do. Listen, step one, 
on how to get past your past, you got to give God his props and give God his credit and give God his due. If God brought you to it, thank God he brought you through it. And a lot of us want to talk about the pain of the past and, and how things happened. And but family, well, they did me dirty. and You don't understand the dirt they put on me. And they get mad at me when I come and say, quit talking about the dirt because God's using that dirt to grow you. And see, people always want, yeah, but it, I understand that. But flip the script. God brought you through it. Now let's look forward to see what God wants you to learn as a result of that. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May I ask now why? you sent for me. See, Peter wasn't any longer concerned about culture. God had gotten Peter to accept the fact that it's all about change. And see, that's, that's the secret. You gotta look at your past. I gotta look at my past based on just what it was. It was an instrument that was used to get me here. And I don't need to be stuck in the past I need to look at that now as the instrument of change. Lord, what is it that you want me to learn from my past that I can be a better person for you? Peter had a realignment mindset. God actually showed him earlier in chapter 10. You go to verse 34. And Peter makes that response to God, no, I'm not going to rise and eat because what I'm seeing on this sheet is unclean. And God comes through and says, now I realize that it's true that God doesn't show favoritism, but he accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. See, in, the past, in Peter's past, it was all about culture and certain, certain people weren't pleasing to God and certain people were unclean. Now God is showing Peter, get past culture and now you're going to be on the precipice of change. And I'm saying, brothers and sisters, that's our job. Things happen in the past and they're painful and they hurt. But just like that car that I was driving that you couldn't tell me all cars wasn't supposed to pull to the left. You couldn't tell me. But it wasn't until somebody who got in that car, who knew more about the mechanics of a car than I knew, said, Fambo, something ain't right. No, cars don't do that. Here, take mine and you'll see. Now I got new information. Wait a minute, then maybe it needs to be fixed. Maybe I need to realign my mind to understand it's not about culture, it's about change. So. How did Peter learn this? In Acts 10, and I love this. In Acts 10, this is again that story I've been telling you. He became very hungry and he wanted something to eat. Um, Acts 10:10. 10, 10. Uh, while the meal was prepared, he fell into a trance. And he saw the heavens opened up, something like a, a large sheet being let down by its four corners, and it it contained all kinds of four-footed animals, and reptiles and birds. And then the voice said to him, um, King James there says, rise, Peter, kill and eat. This translation says, get up, Peter, kill and eat. And he said, verse 14, Sur surely not, Lord. Peter replied, I have never eaten anything impure or un." clean. And here's where the, 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 the shift, the paradigm shift starts to happen. And here's where I think our paradigm shift needs to happen. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. God is the source of our change. God is a source of what's happening in our lives. And, and yes, we may have had uh, some, some, some prejudices and some things in the past and showing favoritism, but God now has brought us to the precipice of change. Listen, if in fact you, we being humans, that we are responsible for our, our choices in life, if your past choices in life, and I'm sorry to say this, if your past choices in life caused you to hit rock bottom. Could it be that God allowed you 
to go to rock bottom. Some of us need to go to rock bottom so we can realize God is the rock at the bottom. See, we don't, we don't think about God, unfortunately, until times get hard. We don't think about God until our whole card of life is face down. I, I, I would argue that some of the best times in my life is when things weren't going my way because I was forced then to trust God rather than to trust in myself. So if I want a realignment mindset, I've got to realize that if I've made choices that have allowed me to hit rock bottom, then maybe now I realize, wait a minute, God is the rock at the bottom. And I wasn't trusting him, but from now on, Lord, I am going to put my faith and my hope and my trust in you. And I don't understand what it is about us that we got to wait until we get in a jam before we trust God. And I'm saying if we're going to realign, have our realignment mindset, then I'm going to have to adjust. Lord, I'm not going to wait and trust you when I can't do anything else. Lord, I'm going to give you praise even in the bad times for everything that's happening to me so that, Lord, my relationship with you is going to be better. Remember I told you every month I'm going to give you something to pack up and to move on. Last week I gave you... There's five boxes, and last week I gave you a box, and I told you to pack up in that box everything that's going to help you flip the script. Remember I told you that? In other words, look at that past situation, and let's flip the script. Instead of talking about how bad it is or how rough it was or how, how dirty they done me, flip the script. Try to take that past situation and look at that past situation in the eyes of faith and give glory to God. Instead of saying I was on the brink of financial ruin, but I had to tighten my boots and pull myself up. Instead of doing that, which gives glory to you, flip the script and say, Lord, even though I've messed up financially, you, you, you love me out of that situation. All praise and all honor and all glory be to you. Remember that? That was box number one. This week, box number two. After you flip the script, watch your lip. You know, we tend to look at bad situations and we tend to magnify and hold on to it. And some of us like talking about the bad situation because we wear that like a warm blanket because it comforts us. Watch your lip. Deliberately watch how you talk about what God has brought you through. You know, instead of saying, you know, Things never work out for me. And like the old show I used to watch when I was a kid, yes, I'm dating myself, online people, you can laugh at me later next week. Um, but I used to date myself. There's a show I used to watch called Hee Haw. And they used to sing a song on that, and I'm not gonna sing it because I couldn't do it, but I can, tell you, I can tell you the words of the song, gloom, despair, and agony on me. And what I'm going, oh! <laughs> Deep, dark depression and excessive misery. No, all the ones are, oh, if it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Some of us love singing that song about ourselves in our lives. I'm saying, stop. Flip the script. And then, number two, watch your lip. Watch how you talk. Language is important. And make sure that things that you talk about, you flip the script and give glory to God. Instead of talking about your past and saying what you don't have, try this. Especially those of us that want a relationship, a wholesome relationship with, with, with Christians in our lives. Lord, I desire a wholesome Christian relationship. I want somebody in my life. But Lord, right now, I recognize I'm not even in a good relationship with you. So if you sent somebody to me, I'd mess it up. So Lord, help me to grow. Help me to see things right. Help me to have this alignment, this, this mindset realignment. Lord, I got to get right, and I got to stay right with you. I'm not right with you first. So it's no wonder you hadn't sent. And thank God you hadn't sent anybody to me yet. So Lord, 
let me let me get right with you. Let me let me stay right with you. Let me flip the script and watch my lip and my alignment mentality, Lord, with you. I want to get right with you. I want to stay right with you. Make sure that in your relationship with God, you put him first. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, and then I'm, I'm done. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things are going to be added unto you. If what I'm saying has resonated with you, either somebody in person or somebody online, if what I've been saying is resonating with you, do this, do this thing for me. Make a commitment this month. Lord, I'm going to come and I'm going to hear what the word has to say. Every time the door is open, if you're online, every time it's posted, because, Lord, I'm sick and tired of living the way I'm living. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. So this month is your month to move past your past. Join me online tonight. We're going to continue in the book of Psalms. We're going to continue looking at uh, a stroll through Psalms and making sure that, that some of the Psalms that, that we read provide us encouragement. Some of the songs, Psalms that we, we look at, Lord, provide us uh, a way to have a closer relationship with you. Because at the end of the day, we all want to be closer to God and ultimately one day make heaven our home. The invitation time is a time of self-reflection. It's a time of self-examination. It's a time for me to look at my relationship with God and be honest with him. Lord, I'm not right with you, and I'm, I'm tired uh, of being sick and tired. And if you have a prayer need that will help you in your walk get closer to him, in just a minute when we stand and sing the invitation to song, you have an opportunity to come forward and to make that prayer request known. Maybe you have a Bible question. You know, something that's been nagging at me. I need the understanding. You want to ask a Bible question, we will try all we can to get you a Bible answer for your Bible question. Or you're ready to obey God now. You come by hearing his word, believing it, repenting of your sins, confessing Christ, being willing to be baptized in water for the remission of your sins, that will add you to God's kingdom and to his family and start you on your spiritual walk with obeying God. Whatever your need is, we invite you to come now as we stand and sing the song of invitation.